Hello guys, welcome to Mostly Sci-Fi. My name is Randy Flagg and I'm your host. Now before we get started, um, I would like to kindly and gently introduce you to my Patreon account. I know it doesn't match Mostly Sci-Fi, but this is my Patreon account. It's uh, um, Black and Abroad in Asia. So far I have $113 from those people donating because I'm uh, I do other work too on another channel but some people have also uh, donated like one dollar or five dollars because I am reading the alien novels and I have provided some alien uh, materials it would be very nice to for uh, a donation one dollar to five dollars as I've said before um, I will read them regardless but any support would kind of help, you know, because this is kind of like a part-time job, a part-time job that I love. And, uh, you know, your your money actually helps me to buy better equipment so I can provide uh, better recordings, okay, and better material and better content. And I'm so thankful for the 2,040 subscribers that I do have I'm just very 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 grateful I love the alien franchise and um, and it seems like you love it along with me at the moment um, I am doing the uh, chapter 8 of original sin so you can see it right here and um, but I have two children and they live in a house so I have to wait until they go out and do something and then as soon as they do that I come in and I start recording because I love reading I love reading this stuff it's it's in, uh, it's really good I just love it and you will have another episode probably by in a few days I don't know maybe tomorrow or Saturday definitely before Monday definitely before Monday okay so let's get to this sad news, which I didn't know until this morning. Um, Yap Het Kodo and the legacy of Alien. If you don't know who Yap Het Kodo is, uh, he was Parker, I do believe. And he went out like a champ. And he's this very, very vibrant in this movie. Uh I think he was, he was like my second favorite. I think my first favorite, of course, is Ripley. Uh, the second favorite was uh, Parker. And then the third favorite was Lambert. Like, sometimes I switch between them, between Lambert and Parker. Because Lambert, I believe, was the smartest of everyone. Okay? Because if you forgot, she said, before they even went to the ship, right? She was like, uh, let's get out of here. Right, she's like, let's get out of here, folks. I think we should get out of here. This place is creepy. She was the smartest one of them all. And then, what? They just kept on going. They as far they went inside the the ship, and then she's like, this is creepy. I think we should get out of here. Right? She gave like three warnings throughout the whole movie. Like, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Let's let's just freeze them or something. And then Parker said, let's just freeze them. I don't know. I, maybe I would have did since the thing was already on the ship. Maybe I would have frozen. Right. And then. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it was quite, it's, it's quite dangerous to fr freeze them. And then it, it gets to Waylon Yutani. Right. And they have we seen in, in the movies and the books, they cannot control this thing. And they're really adamant that they can. Right. But anyway. Um, our our dear friend Yafet Koto has died on Monday at 81 years old. So he says, remembering Yafet Koto and the legacy of Alien. In this never before published interview, the late actor reflects on his turn in the in the iconic sci-fi film. What's sad is that he didn't get a lot of airplay, like a lot of media attention. I didn't even know he died. You know, it was this was just by accident that I found out that he died. So uh, let's read this. This was very interesting. So it doesn't matter where you first saw Yaphet Kodo 
I think his name's Yaphet. Yaphet Kodo, be it on a rerun of Bonanza or Night Gallery or in one of his dozens of big screen roles, once you did see him, you couldn't take your eyes off him. Kodo's on-screen charisma and presence made him a favorite for fans who obsessed over his characters in genre classics like The Running Man. I remember him in The Running Man. Yeah, he dies. And the Bond thriller, Live and Let Die. Ask some people and they'll say Lieutenant Al Giardello on Homicide, Life on the Street. I remember him on Homicide, Life on the Street. Um, was their favorite Kodo performance. Others, like this writer, would point to Midnight Run cigar swiping FBI agent Alonzo Mosley. Midnight Run. Oh, I remember that one. The 80s movie, right? Um, the actor who died in the Philippines on Monday at age 81, leaving behind a wife and six children, was born in Harlem and raised in the Bronx. And the reason why it hits so close to home, one of the reasons, is because I was born in Harlem and I was raised in the Bronx. So it's just like, wow, it's like we're just brothers from another mother. He, he was probably born in Harlem Hospital, just like me, you know. So, um, born in Harlem Hospital and raised in the Bronx, I was, you know, I lived in the South Bronx. He probably did too. Uh, descended from African royalty. His father was a Jewish man from Cameroon and his mother of West Indian descent. His background seemed to serve as inspiration for the widely, wildly diverse career he forged over nearly five decades. But it was his role in 1979's Alien that had the greatest impact. The film, which launched a billion-dollar franchise and changed people's expectations for a, sci uh, a science fiction, for what a science fiction movie could be, stayed with Kodo much longer than he ever thought it would. I can't believe we're still talking about the film all these years later. I knew it was good. But I'm surprised, Kodo told me during one of his last interviews, which was conducted in late 2019 and never published before today. Over the years, Kodo always expressed a appreciation for the fact that the film provided a role that black actors at the time were rarely given in ensemble movies. Parker, the chief engineer aboard the space mining ship Nostromo, was a smart guy and a man of action. He even got a hero's death as he sacrificed himself to try and give Lambert, Veronica Cartwright, a chance to escape the xenomorph. I knew before I opened the script that my character wasn't going to make it to the end, he said, because I know, and film fans know, two things will happen to the brother in any movie like Alien. He's not getting the girl, and he's not going to make it. He's going to die. I knew it would happen to Kananga, and live and let die, he continued. It happened to me in The Running Man, and I knew it would happen to Parker, the black G.I. Joe in Alien. Here I am thinking I'm going to come in and save Lambert, and it didn't actually go that way. So that's him and James Bond, Live and Let Die. I really have to go and see that now. While that last part was punctuated by a laugh, one thing he was serious about when we talked was his death scene in the movie. It was originally written and filmed to be a longer sequence, but in the years since, despite several revisions to the film, Parker's demise has remained the same. Kodo wished director Ridley Scott had made one change during his various returns to the original movie, and it had nothing to do with more screen time. When I filmed my death scene, I remember Ridley had different music playing, he said. The smoke was everywhere, and I'm getting thrown against the wall, and the music really creeped me out. And then, when it came out in theaters, that scene had different music. I wish he would have kept the original music he was playing. Kodo had lots of praise for Scott and his directing prowess. But he also said that Alien benefited from what he called an absolutely perfect screenplay. It was one of the best I've ever read, and Ridley f followed it, he said. Dan O'Bannon and Ron, Ronald Shusett, who received a, a uh, story by credit, but together an incredible script. Uh, who's that? Ronald Shusett? Wasn't he um, the captain? That's what I thought he was. 
I was such a believer in Alien and the script and the role of Parker that I turned down other roles that offered far more money, he said. One of those offers was in a film directed by his old friend Stuart Rosenberg, who had directed Cool Hand Luke and an Amityville Horror. Stuart begged me to do it, but I told him, no, I have to wait and see if I hear from Alien. And I waited four months to hear back, but I'm glad I did. In the end, it all worked out. Cotto made Alien and then went on to film Brubucker for Rosenberg anyway, in which he co-starred with Robert Redford. But before Ridley Scott's deep space thriller became a classic, it hit a few road bumps. Cotto shared a memory from a screening in Texas that the cast attended and which did not go well. Alan Ladd Jr., the head of the studio, was at the screening and people were running out of the theater in horror, he said. Some of us were outside, and we saw people leaving, and we thought we had a stinker on our hands. But that's how much the first cut affected people. We found out later, Lad's wife told him to take the film back and recut it because it was just too much for people, and that's what they did. I'm not sure if people could have handled that first cut before the stuff that was in it. Damn, I want to see the first cut. <laughs> Kodo explained that the initial cut of Alien wasn't a gory edit. It was simply more unsettling. They cut out a lot of scenes in the corridors that really added to the mood and unease. It was definitely more horror, he explained. There's still footage that we shot that's never been seen by the public. I think it makes the movie better. But it would really creep people out, so maybe it's better it never gets released. Wow. It even had an effect on the actors. Kodo admitted that the film's iconic chestburster scene left him as shaking up as it did many of the people who saw it in the theater. The scene with John Hurt was tough. It messed me up for three days, he said. We were suspicious when we got on set because we saw crew members in raincoats and gloves. And when it happened, it was brutal. It shook me up. I didn't want to talk to anyone. It made me question everything. Wow, that's crazy. It was remarkable how quickly Cotto could slide from introspective analysis of one of cinema's all-time greatest moments to laughing out loud about another of his memorable, memorable performance, performances. Sorry, As the sunglass-wearing fed in Midnight Run, he stole just about every scene he was in. When the movie came up near the end of our chat, he suddenly interrupted with a perfect recall of one of the best lines in that comedy classic. I'm Mosley. It was the perfect way to wrap up the conversation for this fan. Kodo was an actor who made an impression with every performance. Yes, it was informative. Um, yeah, I'm just sad. I was just... Looking up, like, who died in Alien, in the original Alien, who's died so far. And I was like, oh, yeah, Fat Cotto got, got a, he's still alive. You know, I'm like, I was surprised. I'm like, oh, he's still alive. And let me tell you how old he is. Oh, he's 81. And I was like, oh, man, you know. I was like, he's probably going to be next. But hopefully we give him, like, 10 years or so. But unfortunately, yeah. So here goes the official like news report. And uh, tell me how you f felt about uh, the character Parker in Alien and how you felt about Yafit Koto. But I feel like me personally, I feel like we brothers from another mother, both born in, in Harlem and both brought up in the Bronx. Now we're going and you know, it's so crazy. Like we both brought up in Harlem. We're both born in Harlem both brought up in the Bronx and we both went to Asia you know so I went to China he went to Philippines you know and so <clears throat> so there is something that this lady says I guess his wife she says I'm saddened and still in shock of the passing of my husband Yap Fed of 24 years he died last night at around 10.30 p.m. Philippine time. 
Sinahan wrote in her post. You played a villain on some of your movies, but for me, you're a real hero. And to a lot of people, also, a good man, a good father, a good husband, and a decent human being. Very rare to find. So, yeah, and I married an uh, a, a Asian, a Chinese woman. It's just so many similarities between us. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, and please like and subscribe. And Original Sin ch Chapter 8 is coming soon. Stay sharp, people. Stay sharp.